DC Public School conditions have been overlooked for many, many years. Majority of DC Public Schools are 30 years old or older. For some students, it's not even worth coming to school. Rules caving in, some ceilings leaking, you got exposed pipes and radiators. In Easton, it was holes in the walls, radiators didn't work, air conditioners didn't work. It was cold one day, hot the next day, and it was just frustrating. I first got transferred to Easton. My first impression at the school was that it was a red hole because it had old, dirty, rusty lockers. It had holes in the ceiling. It had bathrooms that was locked. Some of the sinks didn't work. The stools didn't work. Then you had broke down heaters. Then you had windows with holes in it. And the summer, I mean, in the wintertime, it'd be cold throughout the classroom. The lights are very dim. The hallways torn down. You know, you got ceilings falling, roofs leaking. Makes you, it just makes you depressed. How you expect students to want to come to school when it's like 30 kids in the classroom? One mess it up. Couple, I mean, a few mess the classroom up. You know, disturb the classroom. Make it seem like it's bad for the other kids to learn. And the books that you got, it's like 10 years old. Rip pages out. Teacher tell you turn to one page. You can't turn to the page because it's not in the book. I mean, it's just so messed up to the point that it just made me didn't want to go to school no more. Students that go to schools that are run down have scored 11 percent less, means 11 points lower than those who have been in state-of-the-art schools or modernized schools. The way it makes me feel, they got money. Society has money to build a new stadium and just do stuff that's useless and pointless, but don't got money to put into the schools to fix them up. The books, like 12 years old, nothing in the school is new, nothing in the school. Everything is, nothing is up to date. Everything you learn it is basically something that's just, you know what I'm saying, being put out there because they ain't got no money. Well, they got the money too, they just don't put it into the school. So it, it make me mad because the children deserve better. While we were making this piece, the DC Public School Board was in the middle of elections. We went to the War Three candidate forum held at McKinley Tech to see what issues they were talking about. Number one, that there is adequate funding for preventive maintenance, custodians, and a capital budget that works so that we have brand new facilities and a, and a maintenance program that works. And that's a money issue. It's nothing but money. It's a question of both money and management. But the, the system needs more money, let's be honest. It has mismanaged money, let's be honest. But there's also been interference in the management of DCPS by outside interests. Actually, I think that the issue is a little more complex than that. I think that we are a well-funded system in that we are more than $1 billion system for about 60,000 students. The, so yes, there is terrible uh, mismanagement of our public school funds. Every day that goes by that students in the city are not receiving, that all students are not receiving a high quality public education, we're neglecting our responsibility to them. Most DC public schools have bad physical conditions, but they are a select few schools that do have good physical conditions like McKinley Tech. McKinley Tech have recently been built on the north side of the Anacostia River. Inside McKinley Tech, there is a professional look that gave me a professional feeling that made me want to do professional work. The number one issue right now has been, the district has said, has been facilities. We need a decent place, decent schools for our children to be learning in. We need, we need schools that look like this, like McKinley Tech. The story goes like this. In June of 97, they come and shut down the school. They literally lock the doors and walk away. And the school sat vacant. Although these conditions have been overlooked by many, there are still organizations that fight to voice their opinions. The Youth Education Alliance organizes public high school students in the district to demand a high quality education. So we basically work around issues that young people think are important 
whether it's the condition of the bathrooms in their schools or how the lunches taste or how good the teaching is. So we kind of follow the lead of the students in what they feel like is their most important issue. The first issue that we took on was around the bathrooms and the condition of the bathrooms. And through like just really strong student organizing, students getting other students out, you know, to sign petitions and to pressure the school board, we passed a resolution um, around bathroom maintenance and access to the bathrooms. The challenge has been enforcing that resolution. And since we're not in every school, we haven't been able to do that. BigSouthSchools.net is a website put together by Mark Brobey, a former DC public schools teacher. The purpose of FixHouseSchools.net is to help involve parents, students, teachers, and neighbors in the struggle to provide high quality schools for our city's children. Its goals are one, to expose what schools look like on the inside, and two, to help the public demand change. Recently, there has been a bill passed called the Master's Facilities Plan, which includes a $3 billion plan to fix the schools over the next 15 years. Even though we won one of the major issues, we still have to work hard to voice our opinions. We got a little bit of hope right now. Over the next 15 years, there's now going to be $3 billion to, to repair the, the buildings, to build new buildings throughout the city. I would say students played a really big role in, in that particular fight. Um, the Youth Education Alliance was part of the full funding coalition and also the school modernization campaign. So it was a lot of groups that came together to make this happen. It wasn't just one group. But one of the things the students did was, you know, they had went to the schools we had like over 800 postcards signed by students and by the community demanding better schools um, students you know turned people out to rallies testified at hearings and um, took pictures of the conditions of their schools so that they could take those pictures to city council and show them this is this, these are the conditions we're in eight hours a day so this is this is an urgency and it's not fair that students are not being served and we have and I will say we because I'm a resident of this city that we have really failed in our responsibilities so absolutely there's an urgency and we all need to be part of moving things along.